Today we've got the cordless Festool Carvex Jigsaw. This is the Festool PSC 420 and it's their 18 volt cordless jigsaw that they call the Carvex. They also call their accorded model a Carvex as well. But this jigsaw is not exactly new, but it's still a great jigsaw, and so we thought we'd review it. So let's go ahead and dive into the details and features of this saw, and then afterwards we'll use it, and then we'll come back and talk about uh, pricing as well as performance and what we think of it. If you're a woodworker or somewhere in the finished trades, uh, finished carpentry, etc., you probably have uh, no explanation needed uh, for Festool products. But anyway, this is the Festool Carvex Jigsaw. Specifically, this is the Barrel Grip Carvex Cordless Jigsaw. So it runs on their 18 volt battery system. Includes the sustainer, as you see here. Festool was one of the ones that kind of made this a big thing where everything connects together. Their different sustainers connect together. Uh, they have all sorts of different layouts to connect these things and they pretty much don't change. So easily lock them this way, put another one on top of here, lock them together. Um, so pretty cool system they have and a very broad system as well. Now in here we have the battery. I believe this is a 5.2 amp hour battery. I believe the new kits come with a 4.0 amp hour battery uh, and a charger as well. But you see everything fits in here. Uh, dust collection and even additional jigsaw blades that may or may not come with your system. But very cool setup where everything has its place. Also a splinter guard and we will install that shortly because it's not ready just yet. That's made uh, for custom fit. Now Festool is known for their very detailed and very ergonomic designs to their tools and even on the performance side for ergonomics of very low vibration as well as just having a specific line of duties for each tool. Not overdoing something, not underdoing it either. They take a lot of feedback from that woodworking world, from that finished world and really design their tools to be very specific and to perform very well for the job and task at hand. Now with that comes a pretty hefty price tag, but you are buying the quality and that's what you're getting when you get a Festool product. Now size on this, just to give you an idea out of the box from tip to tail, and by the way, with the battery, let's go ahead and throw that in there. Really doesn't lengthen the tool much at all, just a little bit of stick out there. Um, so the full length of the tool is right at one foot. So right at 12 inches. And width here, you're looking at about three inches wide, a uh, three inch wide shoe, just a little bit wider, three and three quarter inch, or three and a quarter inch wide shoe here or foot on here. And this splinter guard is going to slide in right here, but we're gonna do something special with it when we actually install it and we install the blade. You even get dust extraction with the Festool Carvex Jigsaw and very easy to install this right here in the back of the shoe, just slides in and clips into place. So it looks like it's made to fit because it is. Push the tab, slide it out if you don't wanna use it, but by all means you can leave it in there. It's really not getting in your way. And another cool thing on the Carvex is you see we have a power button right here. Well, I'm right-handed. I have my right hand on here. Obviously, I can control it very well, but what about you left-handers? Well, over here, we have a power button over here as well. So you can either side start the saw, doesn't matter where. Right here on the front of the saw, we have a guard that you can slide down and protect your eyes, protect debris from flying up, but you can still see through it, have a see-through guard, or if you just want it out of the way, you can slide it all the way up and do that as well. Now, sliding it all the way down is going to not only help in protecting your eyes, but also increase in dust collection because now that's forcing more air only to go into the dust extraction or suction there from your vacuum. Now, I showed you removing the dust port, but removing the shoe is just as easy. Here on the bottom, this green lever here folds out and remove the shoe. So you could put on a coping foot or you could put on a, 
an angle foot where you can actually cut specific angles and even a folding foot where it actually folds up and you can cut 90s almost perfectly or 45s perfectly if you will and installing this back very easy again slides on here and locks into place nice and tight you can even remove this plastic base just push this tab here slide it forward and then you can put on things like a felt base or a you know other uh more resistant base, a dimple base that kind of glides through sawdust without pushing it like a bulldozer. So different bases you can get for this for different jobs that you're going to be doing and different likenesses, what you want to do. You have different speeds here from one to five and you also have the auto. Now the auto is going to start slow and as you enter the workpiece, it's going to kind of feel out what you need and the more you push, the more power it's going to apply to the blade and the more speed as well. Now I'm gonna take the base off to show you something here and uh, we can see where the blade attaches. And you can see it's kind of got a little keyed entry almost and you can see it's not exactly uh, perpendicular or parallel with the length of the tool. Well, if I push this in and when I push it in far enough, I can turn it and it clicks. And so now it's locked in and nice and straight. Now, if I want to release that, this black tab right here, push it forward, and it releases the blade for me. Put the blade in, push it down, turn it, and it locks into place. I also want to show you something here. In fact, I'm going to take and loosen up this Allen screw right here and just show you. So basically, uh, you've got two tips right here that are on either side of this blade. Well, you can see I get quite a bit of wiggle, wiggle here from this blade. Well, this is designed to actually set this depending on what blade you're running. Some blades may have a wider kerf than others. So I'm gonna grab the blade here and clamp down the base till it kind of grabs it, okay? So it's got that blade pretty well and I'm just gonna back off quarter turn, okay? That's gonna give me enough slack that it is free in there at the same time when it's back in the jaws, it's not moving around. So that's gonna give it enough slack to where it's gonna keep it nice and straight, nice and perpendicular, at the same time free enough that it's not going to bind. And you should get a little paint wear off on the blade right away from those jaws grabbing right there. Or at least more less grabbing and more just bracing. Put our battery back in and let's go ahead and remove our blade. And you'll see something here when I turn the saw on, So you see when the saw's upside down, you're not seeing any lights. When it's right side up, you're seeing the strobe effect. And by the way, that strobe effect allows you to actually see the blade correctly because it's actually strobing at the correct time and timed off of the blade. But when you're upside down, so if you're making an, an upside down cut, which many times you are, that light is not shining you in the eyes and blinding you, but right side up is turning on. And by the way, you can turn off the strobe effect as well uh, with some programming on the buttons. I won't get into that right now. We've got some three quarter inch plywood we need to make some cuts in. Uh, so we thought we'd try out the Carvex. Again, very easy to install the blade. Push it in, turn it, clicks into place. Now we're ready to go. I'm not going to hook up my dust extraction right now. I do have the port on there, uh, but we're gonna make a quick cut first before we add some dust collection. And we're gonna leave the guard all the way up and uh, we're gonna leave the orbit on zero. By the way, we didn't cover the orbit uh, or oscillations, if you will. Um, so basically at zero, it's just gonna go purely up and down. At one, it's gonna have a little bit of an orbit or a stroke this way. And course three is gonna be the most aggressive where it really moves that blade in and out. Then it will aggressively cut things like two by fours, maybe even plywood if you're not too worried about splintering. Um, we're not going to install the splinter guard just yet either. Let's make a couple of cuts. Again, we're gonna put it back to zero.
So you can see quite a bit of dust coming out here, obviously with no extraction. Uh, also with no splinter guard on there. Also, I had that in auto, so you heard it starting to ramp up as I entered the wood. So again, turn it on, put it down in here. Turn it on. And now you're here, ramp up once I enter the wood. So really not much splintering going on. Let's go ahead and go to three and see what happens there. So not horrible, but you definitely see some splintering now, now that I have the uh, the orbit or the stroke actually set to where it's being very aggressive and going after that cut. So it's gonna cut much easier, much faster, but we are going to have some splintering going on. So if you want less splinter, then obviously you can turn down on that stroke and not have that. So still see a little, but not bad whatsoever. I can just pretty much wipe that away. Now, one of the ways to knock down on that is to take our splinter guard and you can see if we install our splinter guard, it just slides in this groove right here. And by the way, the point goes forward, but you see it's gonna hit the blade. Well, that's fine. Let's put our battery back in. We don't have to touch that at all. Turn the blade or turn the saw up on its nose and we're gonna start the blade and then just push it down on the splinter guard. And there you have it. Now you've actually got it set to where it needs to be. There we pushed it on in. So now it's set all the way back and the cut is perfect for the curve of the blade. That should cut down on our splintering as well. It's also gonna help with dust extraction once we hook that up as well. So you can see now how clean our cut really is just with installing that splinter guard. And one thing I love about the barrel grip is the ability to control. And without any specific or special blade, you can make nice, smooth, radius cuts without much hassle whatsoever. You see, I am getting the blade a little bit hot by pushing against it, by making those tight turns, but the barrel grip really makes it easy to maneuver that, especially upside down cuts. Still very easy to control the saw with that barrel grip. Now let's do a test really quick with no dust extraction. We're in auto. Quite a bit of dust flying up. One more time. So quite a bit of dust. We're just going to, we're not even gonna use a Festool extractor. We're just gonna hook up a small extractor. 
pushes over. I'm going to turn it on and go. First, let's vacuum up. Okay, we hooked up our dust extractor, but one thing we didn't do, because we had quite a bit of dust still, let's slide this guard all the way down and see if we help. So it looks like we collected a little more dust, but by no means are you taking everything out of the air. You're still gonna have some residual when using a jigsaw, even the Fest tool, with dust extraction. You can definitely tell when you remove the dust extractor or you don't have any dust extraction uh, pulling that we're getting more debris and more dust flying off of the blade and around the tool. And then when we hook the dust extractor on, we're definitely pulling some of that away, but we're not pulling all of it away. So with uh, this jigsaw, even though you will collect some of it, you're still going to have some residual around on the workpiece. And even hardwood like oak or poplar, Still no splinters hardly at all, and I'm moving pretty quick. mentioned if you're a finished carpenter if you're a woodworker a cabinet maker uh, anything like that then I'm sure Festool is a common name for you whether or not you have them they're not cheap none of the Festool products are cheap but they make them very specific for specific jobs and they typically perform very well and this Carvex being one of those very handy tool it's not the lightest tool in the world but it's very balanced, very ergonomic, and works really, really well. Some great features on this. We love the strobe light effect that you can also turn on or off. Uh, even the dust collection is very decent on this. I'm sure with a better dust collector, you could probably collect even more residual that's coming off the blade here, but still, it being able to clear some of that out of the way when typically a jigsaw is just kind of throwing it all around. Um, the splinter guard, uh, along with the just the performance of the saw, does a great job when even cutting plywood. When typically you're used to those splinters popping up everywhere, you can really almost eliminate those uh, when using the proper setting on the jigsaw as well as using the splinter guard. Really, really helps. So, hey, listen, uh, pricing on this, $379 for the bare tool. So not a cheap saw, as we were mentioning. And then the kit, as we see it here, except not a 5.2 amp hour battery. I believe the kit comes with a 4.0 amp hour battery and the sustainer and the charger as well as the uh, uh, dust extraction um, port here as well comes with it and a single shoe comes on it or single foot as well. Uh, that's going to run you about $535. So again, not a cheap tool, especially when you're looking at a jigsaw, uh, but if you want the top performing jigsaw and you really want a a great product, then I would say it's definitely worth it. Hey, check it out for yourselves. Also keep track of us on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and even TikTok. And if you don't mind, would you hit that like and subscribe button if you haven't done so already? And by all means, if you hated our video, well, then give us a thumbs down. But would you let us know in the comments why? Have a great day and keep smiling.